For those in the foyer, why don't you come on into the sanctuary here. We're going to get started with our Sunday school hour. Thank you for joining us this morning. Go ahead and come on in and grab your seats. This morning we're going to be doing something uh, a little bit different. Um, rather than our systematic theology we've been teaching through, we're actually um, inviting our church family to come and hear some testimonies from deacons that were nominated uh, from the congregation here at Redemption Hill Church and wanted to just uh, really set our focus and our attention on what is happening this morning. And a good way to do that is always to start with uh, what Scripture says about what we're supposed to do. And so God's Word says in Acts chapter 6, um, I'll just start in verse 1 and read for us from Acts chapter 6. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a compliant by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because of the widows who were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, who will appoint to this duty. So what we see in Scripture is that the congregation actually selected men in the church who were of good repute, who were full of the Spirit and of wisdom. And so what we want to recognize is that um, you guys have nominated people, and there have been three men who have left their hat in the ring, who have accepted the nomination, and actually they filled out an application. So they submitted an application to J.D. and myself, to pastoral staff, to review, um, open to questions from us, but also to just convey their heart, where they're at in their walk with the Lord. Um, but we also want them to be presented to you. And so we've asked these three men um, to be able to come and just share a testimony of what God has done in their life, is doing in their life, and how they desire to serve here at Redemption Hill, how they have been and will be serving. So um, we're going to take some time this morning to listen to that. And ultimately what it is, it's a time of praise. It's a praise time for them to be able to reflect on what God has done for them. Um, and it's also a time for you to get to know them. So as deacons, they are here to serve the body of Christ. They're here to serve you and enable further preaching ministry and teaching ministry and prayer from the elders or the pastors here at Redemption Hill. So they work together as not just servants, but also as leaders. They're leaders here um, according to our church polity and what we see in scripture. So we want to make sure to, to clarify, it's not a, a time for them to try to uh, present themselves or candidate themselves or, or make it look like they're all that in a bag of chips. They're actually not even um, ones that are, need to be able to teach and speak, so they're not like this verbose type people. So, But it's more of a small group setting. That's what I want you to kind of think about this morning. If you were having a couple people in your home to just be able to share what God's doing in their life, that's really what this is. It's a time for you to get to know them and for them to praise God for what he's done. So with that, we're going to have three men uh, that have accepted their nomination come and share for about 10 minutes to each about um, maximum uh, about what God has done in their lives. So uh, the first one is going to be um, Ryan Lawson. He's going to come up and then will be Andrew Summers and last will be uh, Mike Everett and I'll come up and close this out. Let me pray for us real quick. You can come up Ryan if you want. I'll pray for us and then we'll, we'll start. Lord we thank you for your word that instructs us, that gives us um, an understanding of how to lead and serve your church. We thank you for Christ who is the chief shepherd and who leads us each and every step of the way. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We're going to see it evidenced in the lives of um, these men who are coming forward. We pray that you continue to pour it out on not just them, but our whole church. We love you, Lord, and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, all. How are we all doing today? So glad I get to go first. Such a, such a privilege. Thank you, Pastor J.D. and Pastor Stephen. <laughs> um, so just want to start uh, and give you all a little bit of, a little bit about myself and a little history um, about my family, and then I'll go into my testimony and then how we came to, to be at Redemption Hill. Um, so I've been married to my wife, Christina, who's sitting in the back for a little over 20 years now. We have four children. Asher, he's 13. Erlai, she's 11. Anava, she's 8, I think. 8, yeah. And Italia, she's 6. So 
We're a very busy family. We're, we're running all over the place. As, as some of you know, we have basketball going and other sports, so um, we're, we're kind of all over, all over the place, but it's, it's fun. Uh, we've lived in Kansas for about six years now. Moved from Arizona, where we were for about 10, and we have really grown to love, love Kansas. God has blessed us with many uh, really good friends, and since, since being here at Redemption Hill, uh, we just uh, have made such good friends here, and we just love our, our church family, and it's, it's truly a blessing. So um, to, to my church family, to our church family, thank you for that. Um, we first re visited Redemption Hill, it was actually last, last Easter, so Easter of 2021. We happened to be going to Kansas City to visit some family for Easter, and we needed a place to worship that morning. Uh, and some friends actually recommended Redemption Hill, so we looked at we, we looked up Redemption Hill on, online, saw the worship times, and said, "Hey, this works perfectly with our schedule." So we we visited, and I guess the rest is history from there. Because uh, that that morning, God God just told us, "Hey, this this is the church," um, because we happened to be in the middle of looking for for another church after being at our. We were at the Reformed Presbyterian Church in Topeka for, for six years or so, a little over six years, and uh, we were looking, looking to move on, actually. And after, after praying about it, after speaking with the elders at, at the church in Topeka and speaking with, with JD, um, we, 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 we knew this was the place we, we had to come, and we wanted to do it in a, in a biblical way. And, and the elders really helped us do that on, on both sides. So again, appreciate that. And uh, again, truly, truly appreciate uh, everything this church is about and, and all the friends that we've made here. So now for my, my testimony, brief testimony. Um, I've been a Christian for about 15 years, years or so, give or take. Can't necessarily pinpoint a date but all I can say is my pre-Christian days compared to post-Christian days is like night and day. I was a changed person. Um, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, but was considered probably a good kid by, by the culture. I think playing competitive sports growing up really kept me out of trouble. However, at 17, I went off to college. I call that my, uh, one of my ultimate failures in life was going off to college and then what happened after. Everything went downhill after I went to college. I was not prepared. Um, and bottom line, I led the party life, and that's all I cared about, and did a lot of things that I was not proud of. Even today, those things stick with me, and I think about those often. Um, from there, um, again, not, not a good time in my life. I eventually failed out of, out of college that, that first go around, um, failed out twice and continued to live the party life for a few more years. Then I joined the military in 2000. 9-11 um, hit, still not a Christian at this time. 9-11 hit, multiple deployments overseas. Um, things from, from that time period still stick with me. I did things over there that I'm not proud of as well. Um, I wish I had Christ in my life. Um, but I didn't, but God had a plan for me. He has always been with me. Um, from there, I came home, and I was extremely angry. I treated those around me very, very poorly, to include my wife, Christina. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not proud of that. Um, but again, God was with me. From there, uh, I started going to church with Christina, started praying, started reading the Bible, and just seeing how Christina acted out her, her somewhat new faith at the time as well, and how she treated me differently and others around her differently really impacted my walk as well. Um, so again, that was around probably 2007, 2008 time period. Um, so again, God had a plan for me. I didn't know it at the time, but he's always been with me and continues to be with our family. So a little bit, um, 
about how I've been growing here at Redemption Hill. Uh, I, I will say over the past 15 years, 10, 10 years especially, I would say, I've, I've really, 10 to 12 years, I've grown tr tremendously um, because of the people that I've been around and, and the churches I've been involved in and, and of course, through, through Christ's grace. Um, but here at Redemption Hill over the past, not quite a year, um, have, have grown ev even more. Uh, just a couple things. Number one, uh, I really appreciate the gospel even more now. Um, we hear the gospel every single Sunday, and I truly appreciate that. Even if we've been Christians 15 years, 20 years, 40 years, we have to hear the gospel every single Sunday. Every single day, the gospel has to be in our lives. Um, I will say, even doctrin doctrinally sound churches, they may not even preach the gospel every Sunday. They could have good doctrine, but you don't hear the gospel. We get that here at Redemption Hill, so I've come to really appreciate that um, because it affects the way I treat others in my life, my family, and those around me. So um, that's number one. Number two, the importance of fellowship. Um, I, I've grown up, the way I've grown up and my mindset has always been, I can do it myself. Pull myself up by my boot, bootstraps, right? I can take care of it, I'm good to go. Well, that's not the case most of the time. We need fellow Christians, we need brothers and sisters in Christ to walk alongside of us. So I think it was the first, first or second day that we came, uh, we got introduced to um, the, the Wilson family and we started talking about small group in Topeka uh, right away. Um, and we got plugged into that small group in Topeka and it is such a blessing in, in not only my life but my family's life. Um, we pray together, we support each other, and we it, it's ironing, sharpening iron, if you will. And we talk about that constantly in our small group. So, um, so again, number two, that's I, I've really grown in that where I, I need my brothers and sisters in Christ, and and I look to them for for support and prayer when I'm having when I when I need that. So, um, let's see a couple things how I've been currently serving here at the church. Um, I do help with Sunday logistics. Again, I, I'm involved with small group. I, I help facilitate small group every once in a while. And uh, I'm slowly integrating myself into the youth group as well. And as, as we move forward, I'd really like to continue serving in those capacities, just um, getting a little bit more involved. For example, with the youth group, eventually getting to the point where I'm helping teach youth group as I go through the biblical teaching training through the church. So really looking forward to that as well as continuing to serve on the Sunday uh, logistics team. I think that's all I have for this morning. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, Ryan said he wanted about 30 minutes, so I only have two. So, I mean Mike, not Ryan. Mike's. Um, so I'm Andrew. Uh, my wife, Courtney, right here in the front. Um, we've been coming since August, but before that, um, I had come um, when the church started, um, when we were meeting in Jake and Sarah's house. A um, little bit about my family. I'm one of JD's younger brothers. Um, grew up uh, in a Christian home, obviously, in the church. Um, my dad being a pastor, and you'd think that me growing up in that, that I would be this really solid guy, you know, growing up, but um, the truth is my heart was not always um, for God. It was, it was definitely for myself a lot of those years growing up and even into my college age years. Um, and this is a testimony about the Lord's work in my life because it has nothing to do with me or um, anything I have brought to the table. It's all God's grace. So I hope you see that. Um, but yeah, growing up was surrounded with church and the gospel and heard it um, every week, you know, day in and day out. 
uh, which is a true blessing, and I do not take that for granted. I did at the time, but um, I, I had a basic understanding, I believe, of the gospel at a young age, and um, I believe that's where uh, the Lord um, saved me and brought me to him. Um, but I, I don't think I had a, a true grasp on the Christian walk and on my responsibility as a follower of Christ. Um, it's not just a, a ticket out of hell, um, Christianity. It's, it's a complete um, following. Like when Jesus called us disciples, um, said, he who comes after me must deny himself and take up his cross daily. And that's something that um, took me a long time to learn. Um, I would say, yeah, um, all throughout high school and, and college, I definitely was for myself in a lot of ways. Um, I wasn't necessarily focused on growing, um, but was um, just all about sports and girls, and that's what I cared about, really. Um, and even going into college, I went to a Christian university, and it looked like I was doing everything right, but my heart, I don't think, was, was in the right spot. I was definitely still all about sports and girls, and um, I um, definitely kind of wasted some opportunity there to grow immensely. Um, but I'm thankful for being in that setting. Um, the Lord, I think, protected me from a lot of um, sin that I could have been in. Um, and then coming back after college, I was um, still kind of all for myself. I um, was pursuing a career in firefighting, and I had a girlfriend, and it was just all about me in both of those aspects. And the Lord just took everything away from me, both those things, and kind of really brought me down and was like, okay, here's the things that you think will bring you happiness, and I'm taking those away. You need me. And um, that's um, when I went to JD and, and said that I'd love to be involved with the church plant you're doing in Lawrence. Um, I think it'd be good for me. And JD was really instrumental in um, mentoring me and guiding me through a lot of um, sin that I had, some deep-rooted sin um, that I had. And I'm very thankful for that. And being involved at Redemption Hill in the beginning, um, I had never been a part of, of a church plant being started. I had always been a part of the, the big church and kind of just, you know, flown through that and rode that ship and it was just easy. And I never really understood, you know, what the church is for and the purposes and my role as a, a church member and believer. Uh, I was totally neglecting all those roles and I never really understood that till we started the, the church plant and um, God really showed me the importance of being involved and serving and being involved in people's lives. You know, it wasn't just about me, it's about others as well in the church. And that was huge um, because it got the focus off of me and my sin and focused on others and um, God's mission and purpose for my life. Um, and that was, I'd say, was a huge growth moment for me um, with the start of Redemption Hill. And um, then I met my wife um, here um, through the Huffmans, through Scott. He definitely was instrumental in our relationship. <laughs> um, if you don't know that story, come ask me sometime. I will tell you. Um, but the Lord definitely used her in my life um, to grow me in a lot of ways. Marriage, as all of you married people know is very sanctifying, and that's been amazing and um, a huge blessing. Um, we, after, right after we got married, we went to, uh, back to Countryside, the church sending uh, church, and, because uh, we both worked over there. Um, and the Lord used that in a big way as well, and, and a lot of growth um, through those three years there uh, was great for us. We we knew that 
the more we were involved with uh, serving in church, the, the less opportunity we had for our flesh and for um, sin to take root in our lives. And that was just huge. The Lord stretched us in a lot of ways, stretched me in a lot of ways um, there. And we were excited when COVID hit because then I could work from home and then we could move back here and I could still work from home. So the Lord used COVID in a great way in our lives. Um, and um, coming back here has just been amazing. You all have been very welcoming to us and um, it's been a huge blessing and still even growing to get involved here. Um, currently I serve with music team and um, um, Sunday school um, in the kids, kids Sunday school. And um, I think those are the two areas I serve in currently. Um, and I'd love to um, continue serving in those and grow in those and I'd love to get involved um, wherever that the leadership team would like me to get involved. I'm, I feel like I, I grow the most when I'm just thrown into something and, you know, kind of feet to the fire type thing, like, all right, now you got to do it. <laughs> so um, that's a good way for me to grow. But um, I'm excited to uh, continue serving in those uh, ways as we move forward. But yeah, all the praise and, and glory goes to God for what he's done in my heart and my life, um, because I definitely wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for his work and his work of grace. If I was left to my own devices, I would have, I think I've run away from the faith or I don't know, the Lord um, was just so faithful and I'm, I'm so thankful for um, his long suffering, his um, faithfulness to uh, bring me to him, so. You know, they told me I had 10 minutes, and for most of you people who know me, 10 minutes just gets me warmed up. Um, my name is Mike Everett. I, we have been here since June of 2020. We came during COVID, which was unbelievable. Um, I have been married to my wife for 44 and a half years, and you talk about grace. I'm just telling you, I've tried ruining this thing, but somehow, some way, God keeps the glue completely together. I've got a couple kids, 41-year-old son, and his family live over in OP, and my daughter, 35, uh, lives in Spring Hill, married with a little one. Um, God is doing some amazing things in our family right now, not just uh, in my life, but yet it was a top-down problem before my kids really started seeing what God was trying to do. Um, I'm going to start with a scripture. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm going to tell you that's a big time scripture in my life. August 25th, 1981. God took me out of an extremely sinful lifestyle. I was heavily involved in drugs and alcohol. I had a $2,000 a week cocaine habit, and I drank a case and a half of beer a day. It's a problem. I had been married for almost four years during that time and had an eight-month-old. And God used my employer in a way to share what God's saving grace is really all about and repentance um, my life changed at 9 a.m. on August 25th, 81. I'm telling you, I can remember every single thing that happened on that day. It was like a giant heart surgery with no stitches. It was unbelievable. And uh, I can tell you that God immediately took drugs out of my life, but because of my nature, I'm a little bit like Ryan. You know, if, if it can be fixed, I can fix it, and I can fix it by noon. I promise you that I can, but I thought that it was really all about the power of what God had given me, not the fact that it was really God's power that was removing these things out of my life. I can tell you that I had three serious bouts with alcohol over the next bunch of years. Um, my next big date is uh, June 29th, 2015. That's the last time I drank. Um, it was an amazing day, and my wife, which I can just tell you, 
I don't deserve my wife, by the way, uh, but the things that she has seen me through, the, the fact that she has prayed for me, even in my struggles, even gives more praise to God about what he's doing, not just in my life, but in our lives together and our kids' lives, and now I hope your life. Because God has done something in me that I, I could not do myself. So um, my life has progressed pretty quickly since 2015. Um, good, bad, or indifferent, God has used these opportunities to remind me that this is not about me, but it's about the, the work that he is continuing to do in me over this time period. It is a continual process. And I thought... Man, once I got saved, we are smooth sailing, at least the first 15 years was, and then made it more about me. It's almost like Ryan and I called each other before we did this. <laughs> but uh, the, the challenge that I am having today is that God is challenging me to grow in ways that I've never been able to grow personally because I've laid it all at the foot of the cross, which is awesome. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your paths straight. I like straight paths now. I used to be the guy in the ditch, but I found out it's a little more fun being up on the path. Um, the last several years are just great reminders that I absolutely cannot lean on myself. Um, we do this crazy valley of vision, these old Puritan pastors um, every day. And I, I, I want to read something because I want to know, I want you to know where my heart is right now. This is called reconciliation. Lord God Almighty, thou art beforehand with men, for thou hast reconciled, reconciled thyself to the world through the cross, and dost beseech men to accept rec reconciliation. It is my responsibility to grasp thy overtures of grace, for thou, the offended part, act first with the word of appeasement. I need not call into question thy willingness to save, but must deplore my own foolish malice, maliciousness. If I do not come to thee as one who seeks thy favor, I live in contempt, anger, malice, self-sufficiency, and thou dost call it enmity. Thou hast taught me the necessity of a mediator, a Messiah, to embrace in love with all my heart, as a king to rule me, as a prophet to guide me, as a priest to take away sin and death, and this by faith in thy beloved Son, who teaches me not to guide myself, not to obey myself, not to try to rule and conquer sin, but to cleave to the one who will do it all for me. Thou hast made known to me that to save me is Christ's work, but to cleave to him by faith is my work. And with this faith is the necessity of my daily repentance as a, mor as a mourning for the sin which Christ by grace has already removed. Continue, O oh God, to teach me that faith apprehends Christ's righteousness, not only for the satisfaction of justice, but as unspotted evidence of thy love to me. Help me to make use of his work of salvation as the ground of peace and of thy favor to and acceptance of me, the sinner, so that I may live always near the cross. Whew. Told my wife I wouldn't cry. <laughs> um, that's where my heart is today, right there. It's about the cross. Um, you know, we started coming to Redemption Hill in June of 2020. It was, uh, it was so funny because we went to Countryside, their first outdoor service. And I remember pulling up and we had our chairs. It was 90 degrees at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was sweating like a pig. And all of these people at Countryside just came up and like embraced us. It was like something we hadn't ever experienced in a church setting like that. I mean, we were just nomads. We were over in Olathe going to service. And when we left, my wife and I cried all the way home. We did not know that Redemption Hill was being sent by Countryside. And so I've got a couple guys here that I love and care for. They said, hey, you got to go in and watch these YouTube videos. This guy just started this Redemption Hill. So 
you know, I went in and watched a couple, and I go, wow, he's speaking the truth. And literally, the first, I think it was one of the first uh, services at Doubletree, we showed up. I'm an anti-masker, and I walked in at Doubletree without my mask, and there was people looking at me, so that's another thing all in itself. But, uh, you know, we knew that we had found a home. We knew we had found a family. Um, how have I been growing over the last year and a half? It's unbelievable. Gosh, we're involved in small groups. We're involved. I'm involved in the men's ministry. I'm probably a little over-involved in stuff going on here at the church. They gave me a code to the back door, which is a really bad thing. I'm over here all the time. It's crazy. But um, reading the word and digging in and spending time in prayer and, and um, really seeking God with my wife has been a new thing in the last six years. And uh, it has especially been changed in the last year and a half since we've been coming here. It's been, I, well, this is just what we do. And I love it. Um, as far as how I've been involved here at Redemption Hill, you name it, I've been doing it. Uh, when we did the remodel, I'm telling you, I wanted to get my hands dirty. I wanted to be involved in everything possible. I'm an overachiever when it comes to landscape, so I might have been a little over-involved there. But uh, um, I'm excited about continuing to serve, and, and uh, I, I'm on the greeter ministry, and that might be a little bit down my alley. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if I'm confirmed as a deacon, though, I hope to be able to serve and live my life in ways that would create a whole team atmosphere and that would um, show others that they would want to serve as well. That's me. Thank you, men, for being faithful to your time slots. Uh, that was the first test, by the way, so you all passed. No, um, I hope that was encouraging to hear what God is doing in other men's lives. Um, it's, it's easy for us to get kind of in a route of, Lord, what's going on in my life and what needs to be done, but it's always encouraging to hear that God is at work. Um, he is faithful, and I don't know if you caught it, but the affections of these men changed when they recognized what Christ did in dying for their sins. There was a change, and they see the fruit of that, but everything that was described was, I, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to bring my sin to the light. I wanted to be serving Christ's bride. I wanted to um, have my sin exposed with accountability. I wanted to grow in godliness. Those are affections that only Christ can change. That's the power of the gospel, and that's good news for sinners. So I hope that's an encouragement to you. Um, in two weeks, uh, there will be a congregational vote uh, to confirm these men who have been nominated by the church body and confirmed by uh, church leadership as well. So if you would be praying through that, uh, these guys are also an open book. So if you have questions or want to get to know them more, uh, their contact information is in the directory. And uh, there's actually some time left over here even today if you wanted to go talk to them. So with that, we'll be dismissed and we'll return here for our worship service at 1030.